Hey everybody, you know what this is. This is the S. Anthony Thomas Show. I'm going to call this episode More Money, Different Problems. And I'll explain why. I'll explain why right now. Now, I don't know how many of you have a lot of money. I am not one of those people that has a lot of money. So if you have a lot of money, please give me some of it. <laughs> anyway, moving. <laughs> well, let's just get right into it. Now, I was talking to somebody and uh, there was a big lottery. You know, everybody gets all excited when there's a big lottery in town. You know, it's almost like you get permission to dream out loud when there's a big lottery. The news reporters are out there. You know, you go to your regular store and there's a big line in the back where everybody's buying lottery tickets. There's a positive buzz in the air because everybody's anticipating the things they would buy if they got a hold of all of that money. Oh, man, if I had a hundred million dollars, if I had 200 million, I had 500 million. And you sit there and you dream and you dream and you realize you're not going to win because the chances of you winning are slim to negative none. But it feels good to dream. Literally, you just paid two bucks or four bucks or whatever amount of money you spent on lottery tickets. You spent that amount of money to dream. And it feels good for a little while, doesn't it? And then you turn on the news and they say somebody's won. And then they say the city and you don't live in that city. So you automatically go, man, I I wish it was me. And then you forget all about it. And you go on with your day. All of a sudden, that dream you purchased for $2 or $4 or whatever amount of money you used to buy those tickets, all of a sudden, the dream has expired, right? You rented that dream for whatever amount of time it was between when you bought the ticket and when the numbers came out, three days, a week, whatever. You borrowed, you leased the dream for a little while. It made traffic going to work a little bit easier because you were thinking, about, man, when I get this lottery money, if I get this lottery money, if I'm lucky enough to get this lottery money, I won't give a crap about being in traffic. In fact, I won't be in traffic. And if I am in traffic, that'll be my driver's problem. I'll be in the back with my supermodel girlfriends and that'll be that. And I won't care about the traffic. <laughs> or I'll be in my Wednesday helicopter. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? And sometimes people win a smaller lottery. They win something at a casino. They win a million dollars. I remember I saw a guy won like a, a I think it was a, a slot machine or something. I forgot. Well, maybe it was a lottery. I can't really remember. But whatever it was, he just kind of nonchalantly did something and won a million dollars. And he's holding the check up. And uh, they go, what are you going to do? And you could tell this guy had no idea how money works. Absolutely no idea how money works. The first thing he said was something plausible, something that made sense. Well, I'm going to play off my house early. Now, that made sense. That's well within the money, depending on what kind of house he has. Maybe he has 20 grand left on the house. Now we could just plop down the 20 grand and game, set, match. It's over. The house is theirs. Game over. But then he kept talking. And that's when I knew He had no idea what money was. How did I know? And then I'm going to buy my mom and dad a house. Oh, you are? Really? With the million dollars that is really going to be more like $650,000 or $600,000 after taxes? Huh? That's what you're going to buy the house with? Hmm? Do you know what houses cost nowadays? Hmm? You're not going to buy them a house. And if you do buy them a house, that's all you're buying. And that's just the way it is. Sometimes we we get money and we think money's going to solve problems. Now, for the average American or the average person around the world, because obviously my audience is not just in America, for the average person around the world, if you handed them a certain amount of money, even if it's not a big amount of money, like a million dollars, if you handed them some money, all of a sudden, 90% of their problems would go away. I know that 90% of my problems would vanish immediately if I became wealthy. 90% probably the same thing for you now I'm not talking about maybe something where somebody got sick or somebody was taken off of this earthly plane earlier than they should have been I'm not talking about those things I'm talking about bills and all this kind of crap not having the kind of clothes you want the cars messed up your house sucks I'm talking about the everyday problems that a person has you know you get a little bit of money and it just changes things it doesn't even have to be a big number like that you could just get a slight raise at your job And all of a sudden, you realize, whoa, I got a little more power. I remember a person I knew, 
and he got this big raise. He went from being a salesperson all the way up to some kind of sales manager or whatever it was. And not only did he get his salary because that was his team, he got a little bit of a profit sharing thing. So the better they did, the better he did. And all of a sudden, this guy that was doing okay is now doing very, very, very okay. And he goes into uh, Best Buy or some kind of store like that. And just like the rest of us, if you or I walk into Best Buy and we see a laptop that we want, we probably will go, I probably will be, oh, that's probably somebody, don't worry about that's my phone. I forgot to turn it off. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I probably will, uh, I probably will get that laptop next, maybe in the summertime. I'll put some money together and maybe this summer or maybe early next year, I'll be able to get that laptop. Maybe because that's what a regular person thinks or, you know, or, or, Maybe they'll let me make payments. That's what you're thinking because you know it's a high ticket item and you have to have it for work, but you don't need it right this second, but you, but you're planning on it. You're thinking about it. You're putting a little money aside. You, you, you're getting a little less uh, at lunchtime, right? You're driving a little bit less because you don't want to spend money on gas. You're not going out with your friends as much. You're going out a little bit less because you're trying to save some money for that laptop you need from work. But this particular gentleman, Got a raise, as I just said. He's now the sales manager and he gets profit sharing. And he went from being okay to walking into Best Buy, seeing the laptop that the rest of us would have to save up for and realize he can now purchase it as an impulse buy. He can just buy this laptop. I'll take it. Right? Even if you if you take it to the lower scale, when I was in my early 20s and I was living in Los Angeles and broke, right? I got it. I was making, what, seven bucks an hour. Then I went from seven bucks an hour to twelve fifty or something. I forgot what the numbers was, but that's, that's basically what it was. And I, this is not a joke. I think I talked about this before on somebody else's podcast, maybe on one of my podcasts. But my buddy and I, who we were sharing an apartment and, and uh, down the street at Hollywood and Highland, in Los Angeles. If you're in Los Angeles or you live in Hollywood, you know what I'm talking about. There's a McDonald's on Hollywood and Highland that has been there forever. Well, up the street, if you're driving towards the Hollywood Bowl, there was a uh, Burger King up there. And the Burger King and the McDonald's were both selling their hamburgers, their signature hamburgers, the Whopper and the and the Big Mac for a dollar. And they couldn't raise the price because they were right next to each other. And if they raised the price, all of a sudden the tourists would go to the other place. So I will go across the street from my, from my where I was living at the time. We both walk into the, to, uh, to the Burger King and we were used to buying just the burger by itself and a courtesy cup and a courtesy cup. I don't know if they still do that, but back in the day, if you got a courtesy cup, they would give you a cup, right? And they, the soda machines would dispense water. So you, so you would get, or they'd give you water from behind the counter with the cup and there was no charge. You would, like I said, it's a courtesy cup. So you'd get the Whopper with the courtesy cup. Well, I got a raise. And my buddy on his job, he got a raise. It was really cool that we got a raise right around the same time. We walk into the Burger King, man. We were about to, you know, get some grub. And we looked at each other and started laughing because before we were just buying the one burger and getting the courtesy cup. And now we can literally get a full meal from Burger King and upsize it. I don't know what they had. I don't know if they called it supersizing or whatever. Then it might have been a McDonald's thing. But you could, you could, now all of a sudden you get the whole meal. No, 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 no. I don't. I want the Whopper with cheese and the, the the bacon and all that other stuff. Throw it on there. Yeah, that's right. And give me the big soda. Yeah, that's right. French fries. <laughs> that's for peasants. I want onion rings. Yeah, throw a couple extra in there. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Two dollars change? Nah. You can keep that. You can't keep the change, sir. Okay, I just wanted you to know that I could let you have it. <laughs> now give it to me. Thank you. Back into my pocket. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now all that was was going from buy- buying a burger with no cheese on it, no extras, and a cup of water to now buying a full meal at a Burger King. Right? Do you know how good it felt to eat that burger with cheese on it this time? How good it felt to reach my hand to the right and pick up an onion ring instead of just french fries. How good it was to pick up this big soda. Soda, not water. Big, not small. You're daggone right. You go ahead and put that ice in there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And that's just with a little bit of money. But the thing I've noticed is everybody thinks if you get some more money, all of a sudden your problems are going to go away. And yes, Problems that you have right now are going to go away. But guess what? New problems show up. 
new problems show up. Because that's the thing. If your life is a party and life is, you can kind of, I guess you can say life is kind of like a party. If you're having a good life, it could be like a party, right? You invite people into it. They hang around. You have a great time and then they go home. It's like a party. Your life is. 